I think that by now most of us know that some of the steps to building a sustainable wardrobe is shopping slowly and buying things that will age well. So buying items that are in what we call good quality. But I think there's so much more to the conversation, like what does good quality even mean? In our podcast, Sustain This, we recently dove into an article on Mr. Porter called How to Build a Sustainable Wardrobe to Get You Through 2024 and 2034. I love what they did there. So if you want to hear how we kind of address and interpret the points of the article, I'll make sure to leave a link to the podcast episode for that down below, of course, including a link to the article. But it kind of highlights a term called emotional durability, which basically is a mindset that pushes you that one step further to look beyond aesthetics. And it teaches you to look inward and build confidence around your own choices rather than keeping up with passing trends and kind of what society wants you to wear. According to the article, emotional durability refers to the metaphysical side of garment production. Professor Jonathan Chapman introduced the term in his 2005 book, Emotionally Durable design where he stressed that we are consumers of meaning not matter. I've been trying to practice this for years but I really love how there's actually a term for it emotional durability. I love that term because again we always talk about the quality of the garment itself in a physical sense but what about the quality of the emotional attachment that we have or at least build up for this piece through wearing it over and over again. So today I thought I wanted to show you some examples of what emotional durability can look like by showing you some items from my own wardrobe. If you followed me for a while, you have guaranteed seen these items before, so there's nothing new there. But hopefully this video can inspire you to think differently about sustainable style too, because how you feel about what you wear is seemingly the most important thing to assess if you want a wardrobe with items that last more than just a season, and if you want your true self to be aligned with what you wear. So. Let's get into it. Something I find extremely helpful in a buying scenario, if there's an item I have on my wish list, or even if it's just an item that gives me that sense of urgent have to have, is to picture that item worn. Picture it in the wash bin. Will you still love it when the honeymoon phase is kind of over? Or if it's a pair of shoes, will you still love them when they start getting dirt stains or creases? Because this is what happens to clothes when you wear them. And true emotional attachment will look beyond stuff like that. So discard Guarding clothes just because they look worn simply isn't a sustainable option. For me personally, I immediately think of my acne Jensen boots like an emotionally durable item from my own wardrobe. The story behind these boots is that I bought them secondhand back in 2017. They've been repaired, they've been recolored countless times, they've traveled with me to places like Oslo, London, San Francisco, Berlin, and I've worn them for so many different occasions, both for everyday scenarios and for more special events too. I actually almost gave up on them in 2022 because I did feel like they were starting to look so beat up, but I just can't bring myself to get rid of them. I might get an identical pair one day if they still exist by then. Maybe I can find another pre-loved version, but either way, these boots have become kind of a safety blanket for me and I grab them every time I just want to feel like myself and look good at the same time. I know they look quite worn, but I do somehow also find that endearing. I find that it adds charm to the piece and and I think it's all about balance. So I like pairing them with sharper items like a pair of well-fitting jeans and a classic shirt to kind of offset and polish off the look, which I think generally is a great way to wear items that show signs of wear and tear maybe even. And I have grown to appreciate the fact that they send out a message of, yes, these boots are worn, but I love them and I will wear them. So I also wanted to highlight a newer item from my wardrobe too, which might seem a little bit counterintuitive because this autumn winter is the first season that I've actually worn this piece. So I guess in reality, only time will tell if this is a truly long lasting, emotionally durable item for me. But I think that's also part of the practice here. So I will say that ever since I started exploring my soft color palette more, I've never felt more confident with my own style and wearing color too, of course. This is a part of me that I kind of tucked away in my early minimalist wardrobe days of 2016. So I guess I thought that black, white and gray was the only color palette that truly resembled a minimalist wardrobe. And 
I learned that that's not true at all. And, and I feel like for the past two years, I've been putting back together little pieces of myself and my style in a way because I was actually longing for wearing a bit more color than I was at the time. I also think that this jade green color is so wearable and it's easy to style. It goes with most of the other colors I have in my wardrobe too. So it almost resembles a new kind of neutral for me. So I look at this coat as emotionally durable because of how it makes me feel when I wear it. I feel amazing, I feel stylish, I feel chic, it's warm so it's functional too and it's been my most worn winter coat this year without fail. I just want to wear it all the time and the thought of being reunited with it again next autumn makes me so excited. So that right there kind of shows me that this will become one of those pieces I will keep wearing season after season. Now the next two items are similar to my Acne Jensen boots, what you could call my wardrobe safety blankets. I wear jeans almost every day. I'm wearing jeans today. <laughs> and I will wear jeans for any occasion too. I feel like blue jeans in particular really is a core building block when it comes to my personal style. And what I like about them is that they allow me to live my life. They allow me to get the job done while always feeling like myself and feeling stylish. If I'm nervous about an event, I'll wear a blazer, a nice tie, Top, a pair of heels and then blue jeans to help me kind of feel grounded to help me feel safe but also to show people that you know I'm easy going I'm approachable I'm laid back and I think Levi's 501s or Levi's ribcage jeans are probably my longest and dearest love when it comes to jeans styles but over the past one and a half years I have started getting more into the slightly looser silhouette too and right there I'm head over heels for the way high rigid jeans from Everlane which I have in dark blue and light blue and honestly they are my most worn jeans probably ever I've worn the dark blue jeans that I'm wearing today too at least three times per week the past six months or so so again really shows how much of a wardrobe fade they are to me. So when you find a jean style or jeans fit that just ticks all the boxes for you, it's actually quite liberating, I think. And I can already now picture myself repairing and recoloring, especially the dark blue ones that I have, should they start to fade at some point. So I feel like I will go far to keep those in my wardrobe for as long as possible, which, like I mentioned earlier, is another great thing to keep in mind when it comes to the question of emotional durability. Like, are you willing to do the work it may take to keep this item alive for as long as possible? Similar to the jeans, we have the gray sweater, which no surprise, I'm wearing it today. Now I've had a few different ones in and out of my wardrobe for the past seven years, but they have all been very similar. So the one I have now, and I call it the one, because when I have a gray sweater that I love, I will wear that sweater to death. I will wear it at least once every week for most of the year, because I cling on to what truly works like that. And as much as I love playing with new outfit combinations from my wardrobe, because while well, I'm a style enthusiast, it's what I do, it's what I love. Sometimes relaxing, just taking a step back and simply enjoying what's already there is all we need. This one that I'm wearing today is from Reseda's, which just as a disclaimer was a gift by the brand last year. It's a little bit scratchy, so I always tend to wear a t-shirt underneath it. And to start off with, I wasn't sure if I'd ever come around to the slightly scratchy feel of it, but honestly, through lots of wear, through a few washes, it's become a little bit more soft. It's just so awesome. What I love about it is that it's not just your basic straight up and down crew neck. It has some really nice details like the chunkier neckline here and then the big balloon sleeves, which helps to make it feel a little bit more elevated and a little bit more chic, I think. So when you're looking to buy, especially knitwear, this is again where I think it's super helpful to ask yourself if you're willing to look after it properly. Are you willing to do the work that it may take? Most knitwear needs to be handled quite delicately and you know, you can't just throw it into the washing machine with all of your regular clothes. So will you be able to build emotional attachment to this piece? or will it become one of those pieces you'll never reach for because, well, it's just too high maintenance for your liking? I think that there is an, a nice little practice, a little, good little question to ask yourself in especially a buying scenario. So just a lot of reflections for today's video. I really hope you found it useful. I highly recommend reading that article I mentioned before and also giving our podcast a listen if you are looking for more tips and reflections of how to build a long-lasting wardrobe that brings you lots of confidence and joy I'm definitely not a perfect person and I do sometimes buy something with all the best intentions and then it turns out it wasn't right
right anyway. But changing your perspective and your habits will definitely help lower the risk of that happening so often in the future. And I think that's where I find the whole discussion of emotional durability to be such a helpful and refreshing approach. It's all about investing in your personality and letting that shine through rather than blindly following a set of aesthetics because they are trending. So that's it for today's video, guys. Please let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you've ever heard about the term emotional durability yourself. Do you have any items similar in your own wardrobe that you feel like resembles the term? Like, do you have items that you have had for a long time or that you can definitely feel you're building that emotional attachment to? Let's have a conversation down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, make sure that you subscribe before you leave for more slow fashion content. That's what I'm here for. And I would love to have you here. With that, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon with another video. Bye guys.